Welcome to the background lecture for lab assignment number three. The related lecture materials is primarily in lectures four through eight. Written materials are in sections 1.4 through 1.6. Our primary goals in lab assignment number three still deal with resistive networks. So our topics have not changed that much since lab assignment number two, and many of the measurements that we'll be making will be comparable to what we did in the previous lab assignment. So for example, in the first part of the lab, we'll be analyzing resistive networks and testing those networks and comparing the results of the data to the analysis. So many of the tests that we'll be running are the same as we did in lab two. We just have a wider variety of analysis techniques to choose from as far as generating what we expect the circuit's behavior to be. In part two, we will actually design resistive networks to provide a given resistance value. This is primarily practice with using series and parallel combinations of resistors in your analog parts kit to give a resistance which is not available directly as a single resistor in your analog parts kit. That can be extremely useful if your design calls for a resistance value and you don't have a resistor with that particular value. Finally, in this lab assignment, we'll take a look at another temperature measurement system. It's comparable to the one that we did in the previous lab assignment, except that we're going to modify our design requirements such that the output of the temperature measurement system is relative to the ambient temperature. If the temperature of the thermistor is higher than room temperature, we want to get a positive voltage out of our temperature measurement system. If the ambient temperature is lower than room temperature, we want to get a negative voltage. And if our thermistor's temperature is the same as room temperature, we want the output of our system to be zero volts. Okay, to reiterate, in parts one and two of this lab assignment, we aren't really doing anything different measurement-wise than we were doing in lab assignment number two. So I don't need to do any demonstrations of how to wire circuits up. You just have additional analysis techniques to work with in order to develop the analysis behind the test and measurement data. So in part one, we're determining power dissipation within a resistive network again. In part two, we are finding resistive networks which are required to give an equivalent resistance. So it's the inverse of our usual problem that we do in homework assignments in which we are given a resistive network and we want to find an equivalent resistance. Here we're given a desired equivalent resistance. You need to determine an a resistive network that will give that resistance. I'd like to point out that these solutions are not necessarily unique. There could be any number of resistive networks that can provide the desired resistance. These kind of problems are very common when you're designing circuits in which you have to create a desired resistance in your circuit to get the performance that you want. It's good to get some practice with that. In part three of this lab assignment, we're going to revisit our temperature measurement system. However, now we're going to require our temperature measurement system to give us an output voltage which is relative to room temperature. So if the thermistor temperature goes higher than room temperature, the output voltage of this system should become positive. If the thermistor temperature is lower than room temperature, the output should be negative. And if the thermistor is at room temperature, your output should be approximately zero volts. Now this particular circuit, as shown in this schematic, requires two voltage sources. We're going to use a positive five volt source and a negative five volt source Node A is taken to be essentially at ground. We're going to measure our output between nodes D and A. If you analyze this circuit, you'll see that as the thermistor resistance goes high, the output voltage should become positive. As the thermistor resistance goes low, the output voltage should become negative. Let's take a look at demonstrating this particular circuit now. This is our overall circuit. We're now using two voltage supplies, VP plus and VP minus. VP plus is positive relative to ground. VP minus is negative relative to ground. So I'm going to apply positive five volts to one end of this thermistor. I'm going to apply negative five volts to the other end of this resistor. And my output here where the two are connected is going to be measured relative to ground. That's going to be displayed on V meter one. Now I've already turned on power. So we've got five volts on the positive supply, negative five volts on the negative supply. My output voltage is about 200 millivolts. 
I would like that to be zero at room temperature. Unfortunately, that requires me to balance the resistance of this fixed resistor with the thermistor very carefully. I probably can't do that with a fixed resistor. One nice trick you can do is to take a fairly large valued potentiometer and place it in parallel with that resistance. Now, changing the resistance of that potentiometer allows me to adjust the parallel resistance between the potentiometer and the fixed resistor very finely. So putting that resistor in there got me down to 107 millivolts at my output. If I change that, I can trim this system out to give me essentially zero volts relative to ground. Okay, so we're now at about negative 5 millivolts, which is probably close enough to zero for me. Now if I warm up the thermistor, this output voltage should go high. So applying the heat from my hand to the thermistor, I'm getting about a half a volt now. It's still climbing. Now if I cool the thermistor down, the temperature should drop to a negative value. I'm going to use a cold can of soda, place it next to the thermistor. Now we're at about negative one volt and still dropping. Okay, so it looks like my overall behavior is correct. I just have to make sure that my final design is okay.